So at the end of January 2024, a green Mufasa deck ended up taking the second largest Pixelborn tournament to date with 270 players, losing out to only Ruby Amethyst Bounce. Um, but let's see the deck list that actually came in second place. It's a bit different than the one that Alphos and RMB posted, and we're just going to cover that in this uh, deck list video, and we'll take a look at some matches later. Check the timestamps for that if you want to see it. The difference is, instead of running the Panic and Pain engine and Bippity Boppity Boos, this deck has just opted for a straight 60 characters, and we're going to take a look at some of those differences now. In the one drop slot, you still have your four stitch and four queen these are mainly there because you have the bigger shift targets in the queen commanding presence and stitch rockstar in the two drop slot instead of panic and pain you have flynn rider again this is just an aggro threat you drop this it's an instant two lore pressure on the opponent instead of relying on a combo piece like panic and pain in order for you to get that one extra lore this is just a little bit more consistent and usually this card is always going to at least trade one for one whether your opponent challenges it and their challenging character does not get banished they at least discard a card and if they, you know, out this somehow with like, let's say a Teeth and Ambitions, at least they have to waste the Teeth and Ambitions on it. So at least it trades one for one. Um, but ideally you want to at least be able to quest with this once or twice even um, before it gets outed and get some lore off of that. And then you also play for Simba Bodyguard, pretty self-explanatory, good in the early and late games to protect your high questers. Um, but yeah, Simba still relevant in the meta right now. On the three drop slot, again, a new addition is Peter Pan Never Landing. If you don't see your dock, which is your best turn three play, you want to see Peter Pan so that you can continue to play on curve because that's really how this deck uh, wins is that it has to play very nicely on curve. So you can see we play like eight, two drop, eight one drops, eight two drops, eight three drops. So you, you definitely want to try to play a card each turn here. Um, but at a three two stat line, it uh, with evasive, it can trade positively into a mini mouse surfer, which again, if you're on the draw or something, this can help you uh, claw back some tempo and slow the opponent down while you continue to set up your egg aggro game um, and prevent you from getting aggroed out yourself but also as an evasive character questing for one at least it can hopefully um, net you a couple of lore before it's outed the two toughness stat line though you know it gets outed by teeth and ambitions fire the cannons which wasn't really in the meta but you know it could come up um, and other just things that deal two damage which isn't the greatest but again if you don't see the dock you can play this if you see the dock this is usually just ink anyways and then speaking of dock if you don't see it and you're forced to play something on turn four without being able to skip the four drop and go to the five drop because dock quest and gives you that lantern ability you want to be able to drop tinkerbell the evasive quest for two um, the other four drops you play are hades and rapunzel but again these are cards that you want to play at certain points in the game in order to generate their advantage like rapunzel unless your dock or simba has like two damage on it um, and you can draw two off the rapunzel heal it's usually not too useful and then the Hades you usually want to play when you can bring back something like a Mufasa, but it can come up on turn four if you need to like bring back a Stitch or a Queen or a Simba and just use it as ink, for example, uh, or just more pressure for next turn when you summon. Uh, and then on the five drop slot, this is again where the deck changes a little bit. You've got Cusco, Mad Hatter, and Ray. So Cusco, you know, once you drop this card or if it's revealed off Mufasa, I mean, it comes in exerted, so hopefully it doesn't get outed. But if you drop this card, it's very hard to interact with. Basically, the opponent needs to be prepared, which they probably won't be at the ink at to cast yet. Um, uh, Lady Tremaine, if this is the only card on your field, which it likely will not be, um, or like double grab your sword. So it's very, very hard to interact with this card in this deck and why the uh, person who pioneered this to second place um, opted to put it in. And in testing, um, it can definitely be relevant because, you know, with what you're seeing in the meta with like Let It Goes and Hades on uh, Sapphire Steel, like Maleficent Dragons, which again is a very long way away, the game likely doesn't go to nine ink. Those things don't interact with Cusco. And so it's hard for this card to get outed with that. Um, and then the Mad Hatter, if it's revealed of Mufasa, it comes down at a four stat line. It does get traded out by Mim Fox, but it survives things like Smash and whatnot. Uh, and if it does get challenged, at least you draw a card. If it doesn't get challenged, it's questing for three. And then it, again, still at least trades one for one because either non-challenging removal takes it out or your opponent has to challenge it and it replaces itself with a card draw. So it's good that way as well. But the fact that it comes in exerted off Mufasa, if your opponent challenges it, you draw a card is pretty decent as well. Um, and then the Ray is pretty self-explanatory. If it does come in off Mufasa, it has evasive, so it's protected. Um, but just hard casting this and questing with it. If it, do, if it goes unanswered, Ray will close out the game very, very quickly. Um, on the five drop slot as well on the Amber side, obviously for Mufasa and for the Queen, no need to explain that. Six drop slot, you've got your Stitch. Again, I don't really like this too much, um, but I guess shifting it for, and then questing for three instead of one is good, but you rarely will use this for the draw engine. If you get this off of Mufasa, this is decent because it has five toughness. Um, so if it gets readied up and then you can utilize the engine next turn to draw and still quest for three, it's good. But other than that, it's not really the greatest. Um, it's mostly just ink when you see it early on. And then, of course, to close it out, you got Genie. Um, as a tempo disruptor, this card is basically there to help you win the game by the time you get to like turn five or six. If you need to um, cast this 
and just bounce something on the opponent's field to slow them down long enough so that you can just put enough questing pressure on board so that they don't win the game and you do. Um, and that's basically how this deck functions. Usually against any slow deck that doesn't have a lot of removal, um, this deck will do very, very well. But against other aggro decks, the other aggro decks might be faster. Um, but again, overall, this deck did perform decently well. But let's go ahead and take a look at some matches and see how the deck will perform. So in this first matchup here, um, going first with this deck also matters a lot. Uh, I only played a couple of matches and I think I went first in like all three of them, but these are the two best ones. I might continue to play this deck for a little bit longer and maybe try to get some going second matches. Uh, but here you can see us going up against Ruby, not Ruby, geez, Sapphire Steel. And uh, the opponent is opting to play some one drop hooks, which actually is pretty good against this deck considering that it trades up into all one two and three of my drops um, because it can take out the dock as well so you don't normally see hook in this deck but it's really good against uh like anti-aggro stuff i guess right uh, but anyways we're just going to go ahead and just demand an answer uh to the queen i want my opponent to trade their hook into it because i'd rather them trade into that than into my dock that i have in my hand and again the, the purpose of this deck not purpose but what you kind of want to do with this deck in order to win is just do your best to play on curve and just keep questing yes you're going to lose advantage but the goal is that your end game threats one of them will stick and the mufasa will definitely stick since it is air quote sticky right it replaces itself when it's banished and you'll just hopefully continue to just get edge out lower until you can win the game before your opponent can start questing themselves and by the time they establish a big board you're already threatening game so steel is really hard for this deck to, to deal with um, because again you can see here like the grab your swords the smashes the strength of the raging fires um, if they're playing let the storm rage on etc it can all be a bit problematic for the deck um, but here you're going to see me opt to value the evasive questers now that i've seen the opponent reveal one grab your swords uh, but they have a second one unfortunately and that wipes out my ray um, but they're forced to hard cast this in order to slow me down so it is disrupting their tempo just as much as it, as it is disrupting mine and um, you know they are technically ahead uh, but in card advantage just slightly but we're just going to go ahead and continue to drop cards here and kind of just demand answers the unfortunate tinkerbell comes down to take out my evasive tinkerbell and now i'm starting to become a little bit in trouble because questing even to 15 means that the Tinkerbell will get extra value in taking out my Simba and then dealing two damage to my Flynn Rider, which takes me out. Um, they're gonna opt to heal their Mickey. They're just valuing any kind of pressure on board. Um, I'm gonna opt to, instead of questing, smash my Simba into the Mickey so that I can heal it and draw two. So the Rapunzel was actually a pretty decent top deck here. Um, and then all three of these cards, I kind of want to keep. Uh, I, but in hindsight, maybe I should have inked the dock, but I guess it doesn't matter because once I get the five ink, I'm, I should be more or less okay. Uh, but as expected, again, the Tinkerbell takes out the Simba and gets free value by taking out the Flynn Rider. And then they Hades away my Rapunzel, and I'm like, oof, I'm in a real bad way right now. Uh, they're going to quest with the Mickey and then just pass turn because there's nothing else. To okay, they can <laughs> pop their Popsicle and try to keep their Tinkerbell happy. In my opinion, there's no real point in doing that because there's no way I'm going to be outing your Tinkerbell with damage right now. So it's, yeah, pretty understandable. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and drop the Mad Hatter that I top deck and drop the Queen just as additional questing pressure and demand that a let it go or hades deal with this mad hatter they're going to shift their tinkerbell in order to get value off of it and then whole new world and this is the one benefit of playing against steel that they are playing whole new world is that it refreshes your hand as well so you can just like dump your hand onto the field hopefully um and eventually just aggro them out but again you're not actually playing that much ink like you're not inking every turn after like turn five or six so there's very limited plays with what you can do um but at least with on steel uh you're your opponent's not on like be prepared because they're not on ruby right uh and i think they've played three if not four grab your swords already so you can see like i'm in a really bad way the odds that you run into an opponent who plays all four grab your swords you're likely going to lose right the card is very very good at board wiping but here you can see because i'm able to quest with the mad hatter i'm going up to 17 and yeah i'm being a little cheeky here but honestly it was a well played because I, I like i said the opponent used at least three grab your swords they would need and they can't yeah they can't oh, i guess they could they can't they'd have to have two tinkerbell shifts and a grab and the fourth grab your swords in order to take out this Cusco. there's no other way for them to interact with it with with sapphire steel and so the odds that they have the last grab your swords and two more tinkerbells to drop shifts on is pretty unlikely they did indeed have the fourth grab your swords but they did not have the double shift tinkerbell so it ends up being a gg the opponent kind of acknowledges and uh, just ends up resigning there so you can see that we were able to aggro that one out
So in this next matchup here, we're going up against Amber Steel, and this was like a song deck, but it also had some interesting tech in it, which is kind of cool. Uh, we're going to go ahead and mulligan away our high-costing cards, and to start off, once again, we're going to ink the Stitch and play the Queen. The main reason is because drawing, even if I drew into like a Rockstar Stitch, I, you're not playing it until turn 4 on the shift anyways, assuming the small Stitch survives that long, whereas the Queen, I'd much rather play in, a, in hopes of drawing into a Commanding Presence. Because as you can see here, I get that out on turn two, and it's much more impactful uh, because as soon as I start, start dropping other bodies on the field, the queen has instant value to do the attack buff and debuff uh, with those other characters I have on board to help out the opponent's threats. So they do have a Cinderella and a Simba on board here. I'm going to go ahead and continue questing with the queen because I have the Simba bodyguard to drop to protect it. But even if I didn't, if they want to throw both of their bodies on board into the queen, that's fine as well. Um, they go ahead and ink a Rockstar Stitch, and they are going to drop an interesting card in the Prince Bodyguard. Um, so they're really valuing, I guess, you know, protecting whatever it is they end up playing on board here. They end up crashing Simbas, and I'm like, okay, are they going to crash their Cinderella as well? Um, my thinking here is maybe they're setting up for a Rapunzel play next turn, but then again, if I had Rapunzel, it would also be very good for me. Um, so I'm surprised they didn't end up crashing their Cinderella into my Simba. And because they don't, I get extra value off of this queen play here because I quest with the queen, I'm able to do the attack buff and debuff, and therefore my Simba is able to overcome the resist one prince bodyguard and take it out very easily while taking no damage itself. And then we go ahead and follow up the turn uh, to end it with a dock on board. The opponent ends up dropping a stitch and singing a storm of the raging, or no, strength of the raging fire, uh, and takes out my queen commanding presence, which is unfortunate, uh, but they're down to two cards finally. They reveal mouse armor, which I'm just like, whoa, okay. That actually is kind of a problem if I wanted to out your board. But as you can tell, again, with six lore on board for us, zero for the opponent, we're doing okay. We're going to go ahead and quest with Doc, which, thank goodness, because we don't have an inkable other than the Mufasa, which is what we want to drop now. Um, being able to drop that on just four ink, thanks to the Doc here. The opponent's going to quest with the Stitch. It looks like they are really out of gas here. They ink a Simba and pass. Um... We draw into another genie, which isn't ideal. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and quest for four, go up to 12. And then we're forced to use Hades, as I kind of briefly explained earlier, to grab back ink and then ink the queen so that we can drop genie next turn, assuming we draw into an inkable. If our dock gets banished or if the dock survives, we can quest with it and drop the genie. The opponent reveals what they were holding and why they were kind of playing a little bit more passively because they were waiting for that big drop Cinderella. Unfortunately, it's too little too late for the opponent. They opt to take out the Mufasa here and we get a Tinkerbell reveal, which pretty much spells GG at this point for the opponent considering we have double genie and they left the dock on field. Um, it doesn't matter what they took out though. I think it would have been pretty much GG's either way. Uh, the uh, Rapunzel draw is interesting. I could crash either the Tinkerbell or the dock into the stitch and then draw two but obviously the genie plays way more valued here so we're just going to quest with everything go to 17 and uh again not trying to be cheeky but it's pretty much ggs the opponent kind of acknowledges and wraps it up there if you enjoyed this video leave a like let me know if you want to see more green mufasa thank you again for watching quantum is out